Hello there and welcome back to some more Thoughts at Top Gear Labs. Today oh, we are taking a look at over 20 years of hot hatch history as we take a look at the retro hot hatches. We begin with the 1981 Ford Fiesta XR2, 84 brake horsepower, 91 foot pound torque, 1852 pounds of weight. And this is the lightest car here today. It is also the oldest car here today. This is the oldest traditional hot hatch that we have here in Forza Motorsport 7. Of course, there were hot hatches before this. There was the Golf GTI, uh, which would begin production in the late 70s for Germany, eventually moving through the rest of Europe uh, in the late 70s and early 80s, as well as a hot version of the Vauxhall Chevette. Uh, that one would be rear-wheel drive, but it's still very much considered to be one of the very first hot hatchbacks. There's also uh, a Sunbeam something or other, I forget the name of it, uh, that only had like 53 horsepower, but nevertheless, that was a hot hatch. Uh, the Fiesta XR2, uh, the XR name might sound familiar, that would be a name first coined with the Fiesta and would eventually be moved on to other fast Fords during the decade and would become synonymous on the Escort and Sea Aero lines as well as a different versions of the Fiesta later on. 84 horsepower does not sound like a lot these days, and indeed it isn't. Uh, in fact, that's basically what you get out of the base model Fiesta, but you've got to remember, uh, back in the day, this car is a lot lighter and a lot smaller than a modern Fiesta would be. In the game, however, there is still no way around the fact that this thing only has 84 horsepower. It is a very, very slow car to drive. It is not quick. Um, other than that, though, it's a pretty solid car. There's a little bit of differential spin coming from the front wheels. You sort of see one tyre fires happen quite a lot today. Uh, it's not quite as fun as a Rabbit GTI to drive, but it's still not a bad car all in all. Uh, apart from the fact that it's got no speed. Next up, the 1981 Volkswagen Scirocco S, 74 horsepower, 89 foot pound torque, 2015 pounds of weight. And this is the least powerful car here today, and by just two pound foot of torque, it is the least torquey. The Scirocco S is basically a squashed version of the Volkswagen Golf. It's the coupe version of the Golf slash Rabbit introduced in 1974 to basically replace the Carmen Gear, interestingly enough, although this car is almost nothing like a Carmen Gear. Uh, this one in particular is a last of the first gen cars with the 1.7 litre engine, I believe, a North American spec, uh, 74 horsepower. There would be versions of this car that did produce more horsepower, I believe it was an 85 horsepower, 1.5 at some point, but emission regulations and so on and so forth did eventually strangle the Scirocco a little bit. Uh, the Scirocco, a car which I've never really thought of too much. I haven't really driven this car all that much. It's sort of flown underneath the radar for me. Uh, you know, A, not being much of a Volkswagen fan and not knowing much about the Scirocco. I did actually have to do some research on the Scirocco before this episode. It doesn't really appeal to me. And I don't know, you know, I've always just preferred the Rabbit GTI if I wanted to go to a small car to drive. But I'll tell you what, this thing is not bad. It's actually a really good handling car. It does remind me quite a lot of the Rabbit in the way it drives. However, there is one key difference. This thing is slower than the Rabbit, considerably, in fact. Uh, this thing has 15 less horsepower than that car, and when you're talking about a car with only 74 horsepower, yeah, that does really make the difference. The Scirocco is slow. I'm sure if you got a field of these together for some nice spec racing or something, it could be a lot of fun, but in stock form, you're not really going to be able to compete with much. Next up, the 1992 Lancia Delta HF Integrale Evo 210 horsepower, 224 foot pound torque, 2,866 pounds of weight. This is, interestingly, the only all-wheel drive car here today. It is also considerably quicker than the last two cars you saw, but no less boxy. I do really like the Delta, though. It is, in my opinion, a great-looking car. It is a hot hatch icon. It is, well, the most successful rally car ever made, quite frankly. Uh, that is a fact. There's no way around that. Uh, and these things are worth some serious money these days, going up towards 50 grand for a really nice evo evolution model like the one that we have here, and, well, even more for a Kleciniani or something like that. As far as it goes to drive, well, the all-wheel drive system really does help this car out. Uh, back in the day, this thing really could have been considered, uh, considered a super hot hatch. Most hot hatches were barely making, you know, 100 horsepower. 150 was unheard of. So for this thing to come along with all-wheel drive, 210 horsepower, uh, yeah, it was quite a shock to the system because it was a lot more expensive and it was only available in a left-hand drive. Uh, but nevertheless, it is still a 
yeah, solid car. It's a pretty decent car to drive as well. It does have a bit of understeer, which is, of course, the trade-off you make uh, when you go for an all-wheel drive system, but you avoid uh, some of the front-wheel drive quirks. You know, you don't have so much differential slip uh, or as much understeer as you might have if it was front-wheel drive. Overall, a very decent car to drive. Next up, the 1998 Volkswagen Golf GTI VR6, 172 horsepower, 173 foot band torque, 2,800 pounds of weight. This is where the Golf would end up in the 90s with the Mark III generation, often considered to be one of the least popular of the Volkswagen Golfs. Me personally, this is actually my favourite model of the Golf. I always thought it was the best looking, I don't know, something about the way it looks I just really like, maybe that's just the 90s person inside of me. However, I also like the way it was engineered. You see, this car comes equipped with a gem of an engine called a VR6. You can probably hear it right now. It is a fantastic sounding engine, and basically what it is, is it's a six cylinder engine, which is the size of a four cylinder engine, almost. And that basically allows you to put it into the Golf, and as a result, you get 172 brake horsepower, which, if you're looking for a hot hatch at this time, it is the most powerful one you can find out there, unless you go for some of the really expensive stuff. Yeah, this car is uh, surprisingly quick uh, for its time period. Of course, the VR6 engine does come with one issue, and that is that it does weigh quite a lot, and you can feel that when you drive it. This car does have a heavier front end than most hot hatches do. However, uh, it is still a decent car to drive. I actually used to run one of these as the uh, my race car in this spec of racing. I believe it's the Retro Hot Hatch League. Uh, and, you know, you might be saying, well, why did you do that when you've got Civics and so on and so forth? Honestly, this car just suits the way I drive more than the Civics do. I think this is a more relaxed car to drive. Uh, a little bit easier for a beginner to get his hang of in that car. Next up, the 2000 BMW 323 Ti Compact, 168 horsepower, 181 foot pound torque, 2767 pounds of weight. This one is something a little bit different for today. Uh, this was when BMW decided to compete in the Combat Car League uh, for some reason using a shortened 3 Series. Basically, what it is, if you can't tell by the way it looks, is it's an E36 with the arse end chopped off slightly. Uh, and as a result, wasn't particularly popular with buyers, considering the insurance rates and so on were almost the same as a standard 3 Series, but it does mean it comes with the advantage of a rear-wheel drive, which means it can stick its power to the ground more effectively, in theory. Uh, I do quite like the compact E36, I think it's quite an interesting car, more interesting than most BMWs. I also really like the E46, although I know I'm very much alone in liking the E46 compact. Um, yeah, I just don't, I like these compact BMWs, don't really know why. As far as it goes to drive, it is a pretty good car to drive. Uh, you do get a little bit of differential spin, which is strange, considering that's usually a trait reserved mostly for front-wheel drive cars. Wasn't expecting this car to have that issue. That being said, it doesn't really affect the way the car drives all that much, especially considering, uh, you know, you're getting the uh, one-tire fires from not the steering wheels, which does help. Um, it's... A decent car to drive, certainly. I do prefer some of its front-wheel drive rivals, as we're about to see in a minute, but uh, in, all in all, it's not a bad car to drive. Next up, 2003 Ford Focus RS, 212 horsepower, 228 foot-pound torque, 2,822 pounds of weight. We are moving into some more of the modern cars now, with the first-gen Focus RS being based, of course, on the Mark 1 Ford Focus, which is my personal favourite of the Ford Focuses, and in fact it's one of my favourite hatchbacks of all time. I think it looks absolutely fantastic, and these cars have always been known as being excellent to drive. Uh, the Mark 1 Focus RS does divide opinion a lot when it comes to its real-life driving. Uh, it does have a differential to sort of keep all of the power in play. I believe it's an electrical differential as well. Uh, and that sort of means the car's a little bit darty to drive, but if you get this thing on a track, it's supposed to be phenomenal to drive. IRL. And well, we're here on a track in Forza, and uh, well, this might surprise you, it is an excellent handling car, this one. Really is truly one of the best driving hatchbacks I've driven. In fact, yeah, it might be... It, yeah, I'd probably say it's the best car here today to drive in terms of its driving characteristics. I love the way this thing drives. It does have a little hint of understeer, but overall, you know, you just sort of point the wheels, it will turn that way. You do see a little bit of one tire fires happening. Again, doesn't really affect the way the car drives at all. It is a very excellent, very solid car to drive. If I was going to recommend a car here today, this would be the one. Yeah, seriously, if you've been driving a Civic Type R, as most people have in this class, give the Focus RS a go. It will surprise you just how good it is. And speaking of Civic Type Rs, we did need one here today. 
This is the 2004 Honda Civic Type R, 212 horsepower, 149 foot pan torque, 2624 pounds of weight. You might have been able to tell from the way I was reading those statistics there, it has got exactly the same power that the Focus RS has, however it has significantly less torque because, of course, it is a VTEC Honda engine. Crucially though, it does weigh 200 pounds less than the Focus RS, so this battle should be a pretty good one. Uh, me personally, not really hugely a fan of this body style of the Civic, I, it, I think it's a great car, I love the Honda Civic, uh, but me personally I'm more of a guy who prefers the older version of this car, the EK9, and well, the late Civic Type R's, you know, the spaceship and so on and so forth, uh, but this car is, you know, it's a Civic Type R, can't complain, in terms of the enthusiasts, uh, this one is usually considered to be the best of the bunch. As far as it goes to drive, it is very, very, very good to drive. I wouldn't say it's quite as good as the Focus RS in my opinion. That being said, that really does come down to personal preference. You might prefer this car over the Focus, and I wouldn't blame you. Uh, this one does have a little bit more lift off oversteer, which I know some people prefer in front wheel drive cars. It doesn't really handle uh, much at all like a front wheel drive car, which I know some people like. In my personal opinion though, it is better than the EK9. The EK9 had a lot of that as well, but the difference between this and that is this still has more front end grip. It's still not predominantly an oversteer car, that's not the overbearing trait of that model of Type R, and as a result I prefer it over the EK9. And finally today, the 2006 Vauxhall Astra VXR, 236 horsepower, 236 foot pound torque, 3,071 pounds of weight. This is the most powerful car here today, and the most torquey car here today, and the heaviest car here today, interestingly enough. The only car to top 3,000 pounds of weight. Of course, if you live anywhere near a housing estate, you're probably well familiar with the VXR Vauxhall Astra, a car which has been causing mayhem for many years and probably will continue to do so as they get cheaper and cheaper. The VXR, unlike the Focus RS, is not known as a great handling car in real life. This thing is known as being atrociously on the steering. Not quite as bad as the Vectra VXR, uh, but it's still not particularly great. And in the game, well, it's not quite as bad as you'd think, however, I don't particularly have anything nice to say about this car. First, first off, I think it sounds absolutely atrocious, I do not like the way this car sounds at all, and the way it drives is not particularly good. It is very much a front wheel drive car, it doesn't drive like a rear wheel drive car, uh, I will say that much for it, which is a bonus, but yeah, it is rather understeery. Not quite as atrociously understeery as you'd think from all the Top Gear reviews and so on and so forth but it is certainly not a good handling car. If you want sort of a nice, easy hot hatch to let yourself loose in, the Astra VXR is not that. Uh, yeah, I, I just can't say anything nice about it, I'm afraid. Uh, sorry, Vauxhall fans. Moving on to the leaderboard then, and I'm happy because the fastest car today was my favourite car of today. In 127th place, we find the Ford Focus RS with a 128.170, a very, very good time. Actually beats out a modern day John Cooper Works Mini, uh, which is pretty impressive, and not that far off an RX-8 as well, so yeah, a very solid time indeed. Moving down the board some more, in 136th place we find the Lancia Delta HF Integrale Evo with 128.746, interestingly enough, uh, slightly quicker than a Strata, so the Lancia HFs go together, which is pretty strange. In 140th place we find the Honda Civic Type R 129.346, a pretty impressive time, although you can't see it on this lead bot here, it is about 0.6 of a second up on the EK9 Civic, which is relatively impressive. Moving down the board some more, in 149th place we find the understeer king, the Vauxhall Astra VXR 129.931, slightly slower than the 97 Civic Type R, slightly quicker than a Sylvia K's a Porsche 911 RS 2.7, not a bad time from that car considering its handling deficiencies. Moving down once again, in 161st place we find the BMW 323 Ti Compact with a 131.046, a pretty solid time, just misses out on a Mitsubishi Eclipse a GSX and a Honda Prelude, uh, which is about where you'd expect that car to be, it is quicker than an Eagle Talon, uh, which is another car fairly comparable to it. In 170th place, we find the Volkswagen Golf GTI VR6 with 133.334. Slightly slower than a Jaguar E-Type, but slightly quicker than a Dodge Shelby Omni, which is pretty interesting considering I believe the Golf is lower PI 
than the Omni is, so impressive time from the Golf. And finally today, yeah, it's unsurprising, we find the two old timers in 185th place with the Ford Fiesta XR2 or 141.002, which is actually relatively impressive, uh, actually beats the Civic Si by uh, an entire second, and in 202nd place we find the Volkswagen Scirocco S with a 144.586, only slightly quicker than the Toyota Land Cruiser, becoming one of the slowest cars we've ever had. It's also a second behind the Mini Cooper S, but I, I still insist that it's a good handling car, just a shame about the fact that it's got less speed. Maybe when the newer version of that car comes to the course, it can prove better. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching this edition of Forza Top Gear Laps. Next week, I'm going to be taking a look at the modern equivalent of these cars with the modern hot hatches. Stay tuned for that. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, farewell. Damn.